Today, of course, I'm continuing with the theme about the awakening. It's time. Awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For the uncircumcised and the unclean shall no longer come to you. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise, sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose yourself from the bonds of your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Whenever we read a prophetic book of the Bible, and the book of Isaiah is one of those books, we have to understand that when the prophecy was given, it had a context for the time and certainly had a natural fulfillment. Much of Isaiah's prophecies were foretelling of the time when the children of Israel would be taken into the captivity of Babylon and how that their God would deliver them with a mighty hand. But we also understand, even in the New Testament, as the Apostle Paul especially quotes many Old Testament scriptures and Jesus as well, there's also a spiritual interpretation of these things. The words Jerusalem, Mount Zion are one of those aspects that's very important for us to know. In the book of Hebrews chapter 12, it says, we, have, we don't now come to a mountain that can be touched, but we, we do come to Mount Zion, the new Jerusalem, the heavenly city. We need to understand there's a spiritual habitation, Amen. The Bible tells us there's first that which is natural and afterward that which is spiritual. And so this supernatural event that we're happening or seeing happening in this day truly is going to manifest itself through the natural, but truly we're going to see how God's going to do some awesome things. How many are ready for some awesome things? Well, I said all that so that we'd understand that we also believe God speaks today. There's still the prophetic word, and we believe that when we hear that word that there's something powerful that can happen to us. And as I'm reading these verses of scriptures for the last few weeks on Wednesday night, I believe with all my heart I'm prophesying these words. I believe this is the time of a great awakening. That's why I wrote the book on the awakening. But also, I believe specifically in this time, the Holy Spirit is sending forth the word to awaken a people out of a people in the earth. And I've talked about the fact that this is a time when we're going to put on our strength. Last week, I talked about putting on those beautiful garments. We've talked about the fact that we need to shake ourselves from the dust, arise and sit down. Almost seems like an oxymoron because it's telling you two things at once. But really, it means we're going to arise and shine and the glory of the Lord is going to be seen upon us. Can everybody say amen to that today? Give the Lord a praise on that because it is a time to rise. But at the same time, our rising is not in our own strength. And that's why it talks about sitting down. How many know there remaineth therefore a rest for the people of God? The children of Israel never understood that when they went to the promised land. They only saw the obstacles that were in front of them, only looked at their own strength. But we want to look at our strength, and we have to have that confidence in the Lord that at the same time we're involved in what God is doing. We have this confidence and rest that we can have the peace that passes all understanding and that joy unspeakable that God is working in the earth. Now, it's so important that we would know the time in which we are. Now, last week, I emphasized this particular reference of Scripture in the book of Acts chapter 3. It tells the story about Peter and John, how that when they were in the temple, they came out, and there was a lame man there who was looking at them, looking to get alms, because people who were handicapped in those days, as in many third world countries even today, their only way of making a living would be the generosity of people who were passing by. And so, of course, when he saw Peter and John passing by, he wanted some money from them. And Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them, in this particular case, money. But Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. How I many you know that was a little bit better than the money? Amen. And that's one of the things we have to understand about Christianity. It's so important in this day that we would understand that because Christianity is a religion of empowerment. It is a relationship with God where God empowers us. It isn't just a matter of we have a need and we cry out to God to meet that need. We have to understand that God is also the God who empowers us so that we can take hold of that which God has for us. And I believe that's especially relevant in this time that we would realize that God's saying to us, he has been empowering us. He's been doing a work in us. And so last week I said, well, what was it that they had that they were willing to say, look at us? And uh, I was sharing how that in the Pentecostal charismatic tradition, typically because it was shortly after the day of Pentecost, to most people it was just they had the power of the Holy Spirit, and that they had. But the anointing that came upon them 
became something that came upon them to empower them with supernatural strength, but also to empower the work that God had done in them. And they had been instructed by Jesus Christ with knowledge. They had been trained and had great experience in the things of the kingdom of God. They certainly have been through a time of great tribulation, more than they would have ever expected to go through, through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And also, how many know God has appointed time? So time is very important. I sell that because I believe that God's raising up a people today who know that God has been teaching them some things, training them in some things, and also that there was an appointed time for something to happen that was not possible at any other time. And also, there's been a time of tribulation that a lot of people have went through. And we need to understand that was a part of the preparation for today. So although you might be mindful of what you have, you don't know how deep it is until God begins to put his anointing upon it. Amen? And so this is so important for us, the body of Christ, to realize this twofold aspect of what it is God has given to us. Not just an anointing but a preparation for what he has for us. And as a part of this awakening that we see going on, there's a lot of people who are going to realize that God has been doing some things in them. They had no idea what he was doing. Now, we got, know we have a faithful God. Now, Sunday morning, this ties in. I want to share with you how that, this scripture is a part of what God is doing. It says that God gives power to the weak, and those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, for the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Sunday morning, I was sharing a testimony with you concerning the scripture where God was speaking to the children of Israel, and he said, I brought you to myself on eagles' wings. They were in the bondage of Egypt, slaves. They couldn't have possibly have helped themselves, and so... God sent the messenger Moses to them and delivered them when they couldn't have possibly done that themselves. And that's why the analogy of being carried by eagle's wings was so important, so that they would realize, hey, God did for them what they could not do for themselves. How many know that's the kind of God that we serve? That's important for us to understand. Amen? And it's also a beautiful thing for us to think that God brings us to himself so that we can understand that. And, and I will share my own personal testimony how that in 2004, there was a little bit of change going on because up till that time in ministry, and, and I want to review this because to me it's very important, most of my walk and our walk as a local church was God would speak to us, we would operate in faith, and we would see something supernatural happen. Sometimes God has us in a participation mode in what he's doing, and sometimes he has us in an observing mode. And, and that's what I felt God literally did, is he, he began to carry me on eagle's wings, and it, it's more about what I was observing than what I was participating in. Now, that was a direct action for somebody who, of course, was still in the ministry and, and doing what I've always done, but in a, in a different way, as I have been sharing for several years, God wanting to change my perspective, I believe also, of course, all of our perspectives, because this is a very important time that how we perceive the world in which we live is an essential thing, amen? And so, in this time, I know that as we see this awakening that God is doing, we're going to realize that a lot of people have been carried on angel, eagle's wings, if you would. I said angel's wings. Eagle's wings. And he has brought us by himself to himself so that we could understand that there's been a part of this process that we have been maybe observing, but now it's time for our participation. That's why I believe this is especially relevant, that we would know that God is willing to give us that renewal. I have the work of the Father. Last week I talked about it from Hebrews chapter 12. And I'm reviewing these things because it's essential that we would under, understand each and every part of what it is that God is doing. Now, I always share with everybody here how if you're really tuning your ear in, you'll always hear confirmations that God is speaking. How I many know man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God? 
And so although instruction in scriptures and teaching is important, it's absolutely essential that we understand the need for that rhema word, that spiritually uh, energized word that feeds and satisfies us. And so I've always said, you know, if you tune in, you can always see. I observe it on Sunday mornings. I'll get a word. I'll come to preach it, and the songs will go along with it. Ashley will have her exhortation. Sometimes even the announcements, I'll like, wow, that's weird. And then even Psalms will oftentimes, it will all be saying the same thing because when God begins to speak, you begin to realize that. But as I shared last week and the week before, I've just been having this almost supernatural confirmation like everywhere I go, the Lord's saying, okay, again, I'm going to reaffirm this to you. Sunday night, Bonnie and I were watching a movie. Um, we forgot there was a Super Bowl going on. So anyway... <laughs> We were watching Netflix. We like foreign films, so I just saw a foreign film. I thought, wow, this would be a, a good film. That sounds good. So we were watching it. I didn't realize it was a Christian film, and it was about the life of a minister who went through a very, very difficult time, all for his training for the time when he would be used of God. And the basic premise in the main part of the story is when he's really been through a whole lot of dire things, a, a young man who's a quadriplegic comes up to him in his motorized wheelchair and he starts quoting Isaiah chapter 40, verses 29 through 39, really, as he was going through all these different aspects. I'm like, Lord, even turn on Netflix. Hallelujah. And, and you're, you're talking and confirming your word because, church, this is an awesome time. And I believe that you need to know God can increase your strength. Anybody know that? And we're not talking about natural energy because even the youth shall faint and be weary. Young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait upon the Lord, you need to know something because even though you were waiting by choice, you need to know something. There's been a process of renewal going on because it's so important that I keep reminding you how there's something deep that God has been working in you that you might not even be quite aware of. Can you say amen to that? Now, it's interesting here, I have over this, and I actually have two scriptures with the same heading, those who are being awakened. So, this is a time of an awakening. This is a time when we're going to see God just begin to do things like he's never done before, us being our participant in this. But some of those who will be awakened will be people that fit in this category. For thus says the Lord, you have sold yourself for nothing and you shall be redeemed without money. In the Bible, the word redemption means you've made a mistake and somebody else pays the price for your freedom. How many know redemption's a good thing? How many know you were redeemed without money? Amen. You're a Christian because of the work that Jesus Christ did for you. He offered his life. And I absolutely believe this with all my heart. In this time of awakening, there's going to be all kinds of people. All of a sudden, they're going to say, well, what's going on? I'm, I'm alive now. I'm aware of God, and, and, and there's something moving in my heart, and something drawing me to the things of God. And, and, and where have I been? What have I been doing, perhaps? Or you might have felt like you turned your back on God, or something way, way far away. And all of a sudden, just of his mercy, he's going to say, but you're going to know what? Now is the time to be awakened, says the mighty God. Isn't God an awesome God, church? There's another group of people after those who have sold themselves into their slavery, and that is those who are awakened, who were in a captivity, if you would, uh, almost by accident, if you would, maybe not their choice. He talks about when the children of Israel first went into Egypt to dwell there, the Assyrian oppressed them without a cause. Now, therefore, what have I here, says the Lord, that my people are taken away for nothing? Those who rule over them make them wail, says the Lord, and my name is blasphemed continually every day. How we know the story of the children of Israel, how that when they went to Egypt, they went on good terms. Joseph had taken a position of great authority because he had ministered to the Pharaoh, and so he invited his family and everybody to come to Egypt because there was going to be a great famine, and there was going to be a drought, and everybody's going to suffer, but he made a provision for the people of God, and so they went to Egypt for the right reasons, nothing wrong with what they did, but in time, the Egyptians turned against them, and in time, they became jealous of them, and in time, 
made them into slaves. And that's why this scripture talks about a people who went to Egypt and they were oppressed and uh, those who were ruling over them made them cry out. And that's why the children of Israel couldn't even respond to Moses when the time came because the Bible says for anguish of spirit, because they were broken on the inside, it didn't seem like they could possibly respond. How I many you know sometimes you can get broken on the inside and it just seems like there's nothing there to respond? Now, this is what I love about this. God said, my name is blasphemed continually every day. Why? Because God took it personally. Did you hear what I just said? When the world oppresses the people of God, God takes it personal. And when God takes something personal, he's going to do something about it. Amen? When God sees his people are, are treated wrong, when God sees that his people are being oppressed, when God sees that tribulation has come upon his people, he might even use that tribulation for their good, but at the same time he says, wait a second, that's making me look bad when my people are in bondage. If they're losing the war, that must mean to other people their God's not big enough, so I'm going to rise, says the mighty God, and I'm going to show not just my people, but the world that I am the mighty God. How many glad today you serve the mighty God? Amen. This is so important for us to know. Some of those are going to be awakened are going to say, what happened to me? And that's the way you've looked at your life. You know, some people who thought they were doing the right thing ended up in the wrong place at the wrong time. There's going to be all kinds of circumstances and situations, but the beauty of it all is, is what God is going to do. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he who speaks. Read that part with me. Behold, it is I. How many know God's speaking today, church? And we got to tune in our ears so that we're perceptive as to what it is that God is speaking. And, and I believe with all my heart there's going to be people all of a sudden going to say, well, I don't know what's motivating me, and I don't know why I'm doing this, but somehow I know God is calling. Somehow I know God's saying this is the time to get up. This is the time to move. This is the time to arise because God is doing something in the earth. God is speaking. That's why I said God's role in all this is, number one, God's going to speak, and God's people are going to know it is him, and that's why they're going to respond in this time of great awakening, and they're going to know something. What God is going to do in the world today, only God can do. Amen? You see, when you look out of, at the world in which we live, you know, it's a mess out there right now. But I'm glad our God knows how to do all things. Amen. How many know the creator of the heavens and the earth? We believe in the God who called the things that were not as though they were. Amen. We believe that the Bible says that everything visible is created by him who is invisible. And if God created all things, God can reorder all things. Amen. So when we look at the world or whether we look at our own individual life, I want you to know something. God can do all things. Oh, thank you, God, for being the all things God to us. Amen. And I really believe with all my heart that we're going to see this in the nations. You can watch the news and you can hear all kinds of comments about world events and who says we should be doing this and who says we should be doing that. You're going to see more and more confusion. You're going to see more and more animosity. But what you're going to see, if you're really looking at it, the Lord is going to make bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. Can we read that, church? That's powerful. The Lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. And in all the ends of the earth, they shall see the salvation of our God. How many know the Lord told Abraham, through your seed, every nation of the earth is going to be blessed? How many know there's a seed in Russia? There's a seed in the Middle East. There's a seed in Africa. There's a seed in Europe. There's a seed in South America. And they're going to begin to come to life. And we're going to find it in places we didn't even know the gospel was being preached. We're going to see it in places where it seemed like Christianity was just held down and in total bondage, we're going to find out that when our God begins to awaken, it's going to be something that all are going to behold, and the arm of the Lord 
is going to be made bare. Everybody's going to say, wow, look at the arms of that God. Amen? That's so awesome. That's why he's saying to the church, we need to depart. We need to depart. Go out from there. In this particular case, he's telling the children of Israel who are in bondage how they need to leave Babylon. Touch no unclean thing. Go out from the midst of her. Be clean. You who bear the vessels of the Lord, for you shall not go out with haste, nor shall go by flight, for the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear God. How many know God's going to be in front of us, and God's going to be behind us? Amen? That's the kind of God we serve. Babylon speaks of that which is of the world. It's the system that is in opposition to the kingdom, not a threat to the kingdom, but it's the rallying point of those who choose not to go God's way or to follow the things of God. And the Lord is saying to his people, this is a time of separation. The reason darkness is getting so dark and why wickedness is becoming so wicked is so the people of God will say, I'm not going to be a part of that anymore. They're going to know there's a choice. It's going to be clear and we got to make the choice. Amen? God says, as you come out, you're going to know what God is able to do. He's going to be the mighty deliverer. He's going to be not only in front of you, but he's going to be behind you. And so what we must do is say, okay, Lord, I'll come out if you'll take me in. I want to be a part of what you're doing in the earth. And it's important to understand this. It's like the prophetic admonition today. I really believe with all my heart this is a time of prayer and intercession. And when we need to understand how important our prayer is, I was preaching that on the Tuesday morning service this week. But this is exciting. It says, your watchmen shall lift up their voices, and with their voices they, voices they will what? Sing together, for they will see eye to eye when the Lord brings back Zion. Break forth into joy. I like that, church. Sing together, you waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. I tell you, there's going to be such comfort in the house of God. There's going to be such rest in the house of God because it's going to be a holy habitation of the Almighty God. It's going to be a place of his manifested presence. And in that place, we're going to know the joy unspeakable and full of glory. We're going to have this confidence and we're going to sing the song of the Lord as never before. And we're going to see eye to eye because why? We're going to know what our God is doing. Now, I said all that so that we could know. This is a, a, a scripture that's quoted in the book of Romans chapter 10. Certainly is indeed a New Testament admonition to us to understand how important our role is in this. I have this called the feet company. It's the people who have those beautiful feet. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion what? Yes. We need to know our God reigns, church. But we also have to understand that as a part of this awakening, that each and every one of us have been prepared. We have to give our voice. We have to start speaking. We have to start looking for those, amen, who are ready to be awakened and go and talk to them. Today, as I was in prayer, the Lord was just speaking names of people to me. He said, I want you to go and to speak to them and tell them it's time to be awakened, says the mighty God. And I believe that as God was speaking to me today, there's such a strong anointing in, in this room as I was in prayer today. And I, I was just like so filled with the Holy Spirit. And God said, my people have to understand, I've been preparing their feet, if you would, that they would be a people, that they would be a people of understanding, they would be a people to see, and they would be a people who would tell, says the mighty God. How can they hear, the apostle Paul said, unless there's a preacher, unless somebody's telling them? And we got to go tell people, it's the time. Don't delay. Depart. Come out of Babylon. It's time to serve the Lord. It's time to know God's doing something amazing, and he has called you to be a part of it. And each and every one of us, 
us who know that God is doing something special in us need to put this in our conversation. For with the heart man believes, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And I believe God's raising up a company of believers who will be a part of this awakening and will not be afraid to go tell people, do you realize what God is doing today? It's time to awake. It's time to arise. It's time to shine. For the glory of the Lord is going to be revealed and all flesh is going to see it together. Can we all please bow our heads?